All right, KNCO news time is 119, 49 degrees. Welcome back to uh, KNCO Insight for this uh, Wednesday afternoon, second day of January. Happy 2019, everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, Tim Corkins is here from ERC. Uh, along with him, we have uh, Elena's here, along with Rachel, uh, kind of highlighting uh, the Nevada County Tech Connection and uh, getting the word out there about some special events. And joining us uh, by phone right now is Martha Montoya. Uh, Martha, where are you calling from right now? Calling from sunny Orange, Orange, California. Oh, look at that ah. down there in Orange <laughs> County. All right. How's the, <laughs> what's the temperature down there? Well, it's uh, 65, 70 today, and uh, I'm here from the capital of the Oranges. Oh, look at that. Now, now you seem to have a little bit of an accent. Now, where are you from originally, Martha? I was born originally in Colombia. In Colombia. We have an international type of thing going on yeah. here. We got Portu- Portugal. Yep. You got Madeira, Island of Madeira represented. Uh, we got Philadelphia <laughs> represented. That's its own little place, uh-huh. its own little country. You got Colombia going on. Uh, now, uh, Elena, you were just talking about, uh, you know, what what you have going on with the ag tools. This is something Martha, I understand, is uh, very much involved with. Yes, Marta is uh, the CEO of Ag Tools, and it's a solution that allows farmers and everyone to on the food supply. Uh, chain to make better decisions, increase profits, avoid waste, and you know uh, improve agriculture with technology directly. So and data. Now, how did you get involved with this, uh, Martha? Well, I started off with my. Uh, I, I grew up in the coffee farms in Colombia. Okay. And uh, my grandfather and my father, they all had to sell their crop to the Coffee Federation of Colombia. And that was it. There was no way around it. It was the law. And so they had to adjust to whatever the prices of the market were. And let's say my grandpa was not a happy man, but that was what? That was that. <laughs> <laughs> so then I immigrated to the United States. And as I started working in agriculture throughout the different parts of the world, I started seeing that the same issue happened to all our farmers, which is they depend on somebody to tell them what going on in the market but they really themselves don't know what's going on with the market and that's not i wouldn't say fair but not proper <laughs> but the reality is that there, there's no there's plenty of data but it's not in some place that a farmer can make a decision whether they want to farm or shift or, or harvest and so that's how the idea came out after working with being on a farm myself and then working farms across the world uh, for over 20 some years all right. Now, are farmers embracing this technology? Because when we, when John and I were kids, believe it or not, they wasn't it Juan Valdez with like a, uh, with coffee beans. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh, the mule. Yeah, yeah the mule. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Transportation. That was it. That's it. So. He was too. I mean, and that is funny, a right? Juan, there are a lot of Juan Valdez. Even my grandfather sometimes looked like him. There you go. So, have we come to the point where these farmers are embracing this type of technology and information? The reality is a farmer, a farmer always, no matter what part of the world, will ask you questions when you're working with them. They want to know how much they're going to get paid okay. and where is it going to go because the destination kind of gears the pricing and or the not having a rejection, really. If it's a good receiver, then they want to go there. So those two questions have to be answered in some way or shape, simple technology. So I always tell people, uh, when you work with farmers, you have to make it simple and concise, don't make it too complex. And so, yes, I have seen literally when people lose their breath and they look at the tool and they go, oh, I can see now, kind of, I've been on the dark. Literally, that's what it has been. The industry has been on the dark for many years. And USA is a blessed country that has the data. It was just putting it together. Oh, exciting stuff. All right. It it, it ties right in with the same thing with Tom on a radio show. It has to be very simple, not yes. very long, very precise, mm-hmm. and then he can handle it. And single-syllable words. That helps. <laughs> be nice, Tim. Oh, okay. All right. Now, now so, so Martha. But, 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 but I, always say, I always say, I'm sorry to say this, it's not that people are not smart. In fact, farmers are much smarter than many of us, literally much smarter. It's that the, the, the time constraints are so short. Mm. People have to think fast, fast, fast. And and there's a researcher university in Barcelona that made a study that after so many hours of intense physical work, mm-hmm. your brain starts getting tired. And so we need to make it simple, not because they're not smart. It's just because it's the intensity of the industry. Oh, yeah. And nobody works harder than farmers. I think we all know that. And, and they really make the world 
successful. I mean, including uh, the United States without farmers, you know, that's that's yeah. All. We used to that's everything here. Pack out to the oranges to the Sunkiss plant, and there you go. You didn't have a choice. You packed it out, then it was graded, and depending on the grading, where it shipped to, that set the price. That set the price. Yes, so that's down in the valley, and that has been going on we did for it. forty plus years. We did years. it with oranges. We did it with coffee. Well, wow. all right. Now, you, so you're going to be talking to this group of farmers up here in Nevada County, right? Yes, I will. And my and my biggest uh, issue, always talking, um, um, I sit on the board of the Department of Agriculture of California, so I have a bigger role than just the actual itself is, is how do we embrace technology? How do we make sure that we explain to the technology world that is that you, you have to make it simple for us and mm-hmm. you have to make it simple for the industry because they it doesn't do much for us to produce more if we're not going to be able to sell at higher prices because we're not. We're not selling at higher prices. Mm-hmm. The world is not paying more for what we do. So how do you make it simple but and less expensive? All right. So, so uh, are you going to have, like, uh, demonstrations of what ag tools can do for local farmers here? Yes, 100%. You will see how you would see comparative prices for the last 25 years in simple uh, clicks. And so you're able to figure out uh, the marketplace and the volumes and the pricing and the destinations and so on and so forth. It is a uh, little leader. Uh, we have um, found that 67 variables affect a crop decision making we just don't know it but the old timers and i love the old timers in this industry they think all of it but they just don't say it for example shipping on a uh, a payday versus which is on a monday versus a payday on a friday mm-hmm. makes a huge difference on how you can sell your products hmm. yeah all right I, I like juan valdez's mule yeah <laughs> no i go back to that that, that one, or, or that was the other one, it was the famous Jeep. Those are the ones who used to carry all our coffee yeah. trains up yeah. and down. Well, they still as of today, actually. See, I, I kind of dated myself there, Martha, when I mm. brought up that commercial. Yeah. <laughs> I had to look it up on the Internet to see what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm sure I you did. I'm sure you did. All right. <laughs> Uh, is there any exciting new things that are, are happening with Ag Tools? some things that are for 2019, some new uh, innovations or anything like that? The developments are important uh, that uh, retailers are embracing the technology because uh, I go back to the quality of life. The industry is uh, a nonstop 24-7 industry. Yeah. And when we created this tool, it was about embracing, uh, uh, making the quality of life better for, for from the farmer all the way to the retailer because the retailer makes a lot of decisions that affect our industry. And so by making them more engaged, and we are, um, by making them understand better the exchange rates which uh, or the tariffs, now that we have so much of that going on, mm-hmm. having that on the tool, so you you can see the trends based on tariffs. So you, you understand whether next year you might consider that instead of thinking about China or India or Mexico, whatever, you might want to consider uh, adjusting your crop to local. Um, thank God there's more local consumption. So uh, you can see the consumer index. Uh, of what is being bought more where, so you can start thinking shipping that blueberry or that lettuce to a Chicago versus, uh, I don't know, locally Nevada. All right. I, I know one thing this technology could help. You know, we have these food scares. You know, we just went through uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas with the gathering of families, and, and I think I could bring up the romaine lettuce yeah. thing that, that mm-hmm. affected everybody. And uh, so with with this technology, does that help? In the tracking and, and all that stuff of where that lettuce came from, well, what farm and all that stuff, is it all kind of electronically tagged, for lack of a better term? No. Yes and no. The answer is the traceability is not part of the tool, and it's purposely done because these blockchain uh, industries that are popping up um, are supposedly doing that traceability. What it does, though, is climate change is affecting uh, how our crops are raised. So. We, if anybody has read the book 1492, which is the book about where the original crops were started, mm-hmm. we have transplanted many of our crops to areas where it never should have existed, but now we have them. So the change of the climate now that it's happening even more intense. I used to be able to plant three, four years in advance a crop. Nowadays you do it one year and you cross your fingers and make sure that everything works. Um, this climate change trends 
allow you to make decisions faster on whether there's going to be a hail that normally never happened in that time. Like right now we're living one in Arizona, a hail that never happened. And all of a sudden that is affecting the whole crop. So 15, 20 days in advance, knowing this type of situations will adjust, will change your crop, which will at the same time, uh, now it's confirmed by the Lifty uh, uh, President um, Association that the change of the weather patterns in Arizona for romaine levels is seems to be, and almost sure, the main cause of what happened four months ago. Mm. So climate change is crucial now to understand those weather patterns on the future by the variety which we have it and by the microclimate of each one of the crops and, and, and the region. All right. Now, Elena, uh, she's going to be part of this uh, conference. Um, for people that want to uh, attend her speech, is it uh, just one part of a, a number of people speaking? Um, sorry. Well, it's just that is she just one speaker or do you have several speakers? Oh, yeah. Yes, we have uh, two other speakers, and then we are also uh, confirming a fourth speaker. So we'll have some details soon. And that's a surprise. It's actually uh, uh, we want to also bring blockchain to this conversation, exactly like Marta was talking about. Yeah. You were talking about tracking, mm -hmm. and there are some companies of blockchain doing that, and also doing other work in uh, regeneration, de regenerating uh, uh, environment and uh, agriculture. All right, and you use that term. I, I didn't understand. Now, Tim's right. When I don't get some of these terms. The, so was it block, what blockchain? It? Blockchain. Blockchain. It's it's uh, basically uh, it's as in the name, it's a chain of contracts that tie all together, and you have no way of corrupting that chain. Yes. Okay. And that chain will connect from the first moment you track that product mm -hmm. to the moment it's sold. And Whoever it's handles it all the way through. All the way through, mm. and it keeps it safe it keeps it as uh, uncorrupted as possible from the beginning to the to your plate or in this case or in agriculture wow. to your product so that's a very interesting uh, one matter that we really want to bring in too so we'll we'll see all right <laughs>